Shiny Happy People focuses on Bill as they should. He started all of this. He is the man, the singular individual who began this toxic ministry that has destroyed thousands and thousands of lives. Welcome back to Prey vs. Predator. We are thrilled to have Lindsay Williams here for another episode. If any of you listeners have not listened to one of our Lindsay Williams episodes, Williams episodes, please go back and do it now. She is so fun and she is so full of wisdom and she's got some tales to tell. So this is going to be our fourth session talking to her and... um. We're going to visit the uh, IBLP organization today, and we're going to talk about what is Bill Gothard doing now. So, Lindsay, tell us. <laughs> Hello, and thank you again for having You're me You're welcome. <laughs> I like having my own little segment. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, since the Shiny Happy People documentary on Amazon Prime came out, um, I don't think much has actually changed with Bill as far as what he's doing. He's in his 80s. He's living in his family home. He's and alive. Yeah. His family I thought home. he was dead. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. In a very nice neighborhood. <laughs> and um, he is continuing to, with the help of someone else, he's continuing to put out information that dri- thoughts that dribble from his mind and um, his prophecies and prophetic conversations to Facebook and also over to Twitter, mm. now known as X. And um, it's uh, it's just full of a lot of yucky stuff, if I can just say it like that. Um, it's inaccurate. It's toxic. It's very patriarchal. It's authoritarian control. Um, some of the things that he has talked about, he he was talking about abuse in the home, or if you have an angry person in your home, how do you deal with it? And at the very bottom of the conversation, at the very end of it, one of the points was, if you need to get authorities involved, you should contact a domestic hotline, domestic violence hotline, but fails to give a phone number or any way to contact that hotline. And we all know, all of us in the real world with real feelings and care and empathy for other people know that if you say you should reach out to a domestic violence hotline, you should then follow it up with the phone number. Absolutely. Um, I then posted that phone number just because it seemed Mm -hmm. like that slipped their mind and they forgot that maybe that number would be important to somebody going Mm -hmm. through domestic violence. Yep, Bill. So uh, it was taken down pretty quickly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that was cute. Um, but, you know, he so he's spewing out his little things. He has different booklets that he continues to create that are just a regurgitation of the things he said over the past, you know, 50 years. Um, but he does have <laughs> and toes touts out this website that he has called Embassy University. And uh, I would just encourage if you want a really good laugh to just go check it out. Um, Again, if you are in the real world and you've had a proper education, it's quite hysterical because you can get a master's degree, a bachelor's degree, um, a doctorate simply by meditating on scripture for multiple years. So maybe your, your, your master's might be two or three years, your doctorate might need six. But that's how that's how you you become this really smart, smart, Person, but these are not accredited, d- credited doctorates or masters. These are well, his uh, to be determined. But it is um, the oversight for this university is um, accepted in Florida. Mm. Oh, Go figure. Yeah. OK. Yes. So I have yet to hear or know of anyone who has tried to take this, quote, program of meditation for years and years and years. But um, how much does it cost to take this program? Is this a cash grab or? Well, it would feel like it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know that there's money listed on the site right now. I'd have to go and take a peek at it. But it is it's just hysterical to read how he feels you can now somehow get a master's degree. And then I don't know what go to LinkedIn and get a job. Yeah, It's not how the real world works, bro. Um, But he also is devoid of understanding how the real world real world works. He has been out of normalcy his entire life. And he has spun a narrative and lived in his own uh, echo chamber 
bubble for far too long. The fact that you would believe that this is how you would help other people with education is just a joke. But he also does not believe in education. He (laughs) believes in spiritual indoctrination Mm -hmm. and spiritual control, having God literally control every aspect of your life. And he doesn't seem to understand that, especially for those of us who are homeschooled in his educational program, (laughs) educational is the loosest word in that title, Uh but there's there's nothing that we had to stand on when we got into the real world. And that was really quite terrifying for us. And we had to not only undo what we were taught, we had to learn everything we weren't taught. And that's hard to do to make up for that huge amount. I have 10 years of lost time for getting a basic education. So uh, this is his delusion, in my opinion. Embassy University is his delusion. It's also a way for a predator to maybe build a platform of converts, Mm -hmm. maybe build a you know, a bunch of prey that will pay attention to him again, maybe. Well, uh, just when it's all he knows how to do. Yeah. I don't think he knows any other way to behave, but to predatorily seek other people's money and attention. But why would he have to? I mean, he, he really literally doesn't have to find any other way. He's got so many people, it seems, absolutely catering to whatever it he says or does. He puts up a university and people pay. Yeah, but but right now he has lost a lot of that attention. The attention is, I mean, the attention he's getting is negative um, from the press, from stuff like Shiny Happy People mm. or the other documentary that'll be coming out in 2024 called Until the Truth, mm-hmm. um, which is being told by several other survivors, uh, mainly the women that were involved in the lawsuit against Bill Gothard. Oh. So they are putting out that uh, documentary for from their perspective. And um, so I think the attention he gets is uh, more on the negative side, though he still does have followers. I mean, if you're just going by Facebook, but but when it comes to IBLP, he's not involved in that anymore. Mm-hmm. He's been completely ousted. He's actually in a lawsuit against IBLP trying to recover and get some of IBLP back. But he kind of did this honor system thing, you know, like a verbal agreement, which again, he doesn't live in the real world. He doesn't understand real world rules because he's so used to his own ability to manipulate and control other people. So they had this sort of like spoken agreement that he would leave for a few years and then come back and be reinstated. But things kept coming up and problems. He is a problem. And Mm. IBLP, as far as they're concerned as an organization, they don't want anything to do with him, even though he created it and it was his baby from conception and inception, I guess. But he he is now ousted from it. He's been he's been kicked to the curb. So shiny, happy people focuses on Bill as they should. He started all of this. He is the man, the singular individual who began this toxic ministry that has destroyed thousands and thousands of lives. So the focus is on Bill. This is what he's done. This is what he created. He he is who destroyed my life, his teachings, and him very specifically. Um, but when it comes to IBLP, they kind of look at it and say, well, hey, you know, this is my speculation. But they're probably more than happy that everyone's focusing on Bill Gothard right. and not on IBLP. They've disassociated from him. He's been scrubbed from a lot of the website. He's been scrubbed. They don't speak his name at their seminars when they do their um, they actually put some of their trainings and teachings online. And I have logged into a few to see what's going on. His name is not spoken. So they are OK with putting him to the side. Let everybody else focus on him while they continue. They've not stopped anything since Shiny Happy People came out. They have continued to do their family camps. They've continued to do their programs of Journey to the Heart and Alert, et cetera, et cetera. And these are all um, Gothard. All programs. Um, so so they haven't got rid of any of the impact or influence or structures that he put in place, which hurt right. so many people. Mm-hmm. But the image. So what I'm hearing you say is the image of him they're getting rid of. But right. his heart and soul is still very much. His teachings and- are the ministry. They're like, you can take his name away, but his teachings are the problem and they are still 
peddling his teachings, just not using his name anymore. And his words. So like, that's what I'm confused about. Wouldn't that be a licensing? Like, couldn't they take away because he wrote the material? I'm not saying he should get a dime for it, but I'm just saying if he wrote the material, it should be. I think there's more to it with the lawsuit. Um, I believe it is public knowledge, so we can all go look it up and read. I have not read the thing in its entirety, but I have a few friends that have. Um, But I think it just comes down to IBLP as an organization holds the materials. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And Bill did not, it wasn't Bill Gothard, the organization. It was the Institute in Basic Life Mm -hmm. Principles organization. He's just no longer the president. So has anything changed? post documentary in the organization in the organization not for you because obviously that's things have changed <laughs> it's all changed for me uh, yeah. as far as, um, actually not not that much changed for me if anything i just am advocating more against them um but within within the organization from what i can tell not that much but i do know they're trying to sell off property uh, the oak brook property they're trying to sell that off um they are also selling off the north woods uh, compound or, you know, the the place that they had up there that they would use for retreats and alert got started up there. It's uh, up in uh, northern Michigan. <clears throat> so they're they are trying to to, you know, get financial, I think, financial support by selling those off is my my guess. Plus, there's just not it's not as active as it used to be, which is also a really good thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm happy that it is not as active and that these programs are not flourishing like they did in the 90s and the early 2000s. Um, so that is that is a plus. But in acquiring all of that money, what happens with that money? What are they going to do when they have those funds, when they sell off these properties? You know, these I feel like these types of ministries or programs, they they can take really hard knocks. But if they keep their head down and they sort of stay out of the fray, they can come back up in a different way. They can mm-hmm. they can Absolutely. Re, uh, you know, reinvent themselves and still have the same com- the same narrative, just different name. That's my fear, even hearing you speak. It's like they can just call themselves something completely different. And people will be like, look at this. This is a great family system. So well, that's what they're doing. Yeah. So it, even though these are still under the, um, I hate using the term umbrella, but like the corporate <laughs> business umbrella of IBLP, they are now calling their main website the Home Discipleship Network. So oh, that wow. sounds so nice for an evangelical or just a mainstream Christian, right? Oh, yeah. a home discipleship network. How lovely. Um, still Bill Gothard's teachings. Nothing's changing on that. All the people that that have spoken at seminars back in the day, they are using they all of those videos are available for you to watch if you want. The same stuff I watched when in the 80s, still there. Um, they also have uh, a podcast called Commands of Christ, which actually cracks me up. That, so what much. a name. Uh, because the Commands of Christ, they literally are like, we just think that we need to follow Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And and let this be a guide to us on how we should live the Christian life, the Sermon on the Mount. Well, for someone like myself who was raised in the homeschooling program, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is the entire homeschooling program foundation. So um, in their podcast, they literally are regurgitating everything that a 1980s, 1990s IBLP kid, ATI kid would know. Again, no different. Just Bill's not in the the conversation. Wow. So same shit, different package. Yeah. No, the structure is still there, the predatory structure. And that's what... It's, it is frightening to me because I, I, I imagine a young family or a young girl being brought up in this system that hasn't changed. And it was created on a, a person who was a predator, you know, and it's creating a whole generation of people just being lined up to be abused again. If you don't do your research, which I would say there's a whole contingent within that community, if you aren't educated how to do research properly, not just Google things, there is a whole way of researching. And, you know, we hear that, you know, with COVID, all of that stuff. It's like, well, I did my research. It's like, uh, Googling is not research. So these people aren't going to know, you know, and I feel bad for that. You know, it's it's like it's hiding in different clothes. 
Well, isn't that isn't that part of the technique, though? The part of the technique is to make sure that people don't do research, don't even know how to do research, don't know how to think critically and are scared of thinking critically. You don't need to. You have principles. (laughs) You have Matthew, what, five, six and seven. So you don't need to think. And you have Bill Gothard's interpretation of that I'm I'm assuming it's not just laid out for you to interpret as you will. I'm assuming that there is very complex and clear um, structure for how you are to interpret that. Is that fair? It's been broken. Yes, it's fully broken down. I mean, there's 54 wisdom booklets that go through Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And the kids, well, men now, but the men that are doing this podcast were raised as IBLP kids. They are my generation. So they are, they are, they firsthand, you know, drank the Kool-Aid and now they are just putting it out there with these very high pitched jovial voices. Um, And yet what they are saying is so arresting. It's thought stopping techniques, it's behavior control. It's, you know, and yet for them, it's like, well, this is just what Jesus wants us to be, everybody. And you're like, this sounds like the family Bible children's hour, you know, I'm just like, oh, it's, it's just, it's really strange to me, but I, I hate that I see the other side that I know that they think that this is like, this is just the new, let's take advantage of technology and let's just continue to spread the gospel and spread this fundamentalist viewpoint. And they really think that this is just the only way to, to live. Um, Is, is IBLP predominantly white or are there are there any minorities that are involved? It's predominantly white. Um, I think the, there may be a handful of other ethnic individuals in the program, but I always found that to be very curious, too, because that's pretty brave. I know. <laughs> I would say. Um, and then, it, you know, adoptions so that you mm. have some oh, diversity yeah, yeah. through right, adoption. Right. right, right. Um, but I still think that the mindset is not healthy towards any minority. Right. I would I would think that they would have to change their like I'm just tro- purely thinking about curricular. I'm like, no one's going to want to see a 1980s representation of like. I don't oh, know. Honey, fundamentalists do. But if that's, I, if that's they all you know. They want to go back to the 50s. They, yeah. they want everything yeah. just homespun and cuddly and keep women in their positions and mm-hmm. in their places, keep them submissive. It doesn't matter what what if the textbook's from the 80s. They're not looking for modern thought. They're not looking to evolve and to grow. This is a very comfortable space for them to be in because it takes them back to where they felt the most safe. So who is in charge now? Um, so the president now, um, our board of directors, is uh, Tim Levandusky. And uh, I actually had a run in with Tim Levandusky when I was sent down to Oklahoma City when I got in trouble. Um, he was the individual that told me that uh, going from headquarters down to down to Oklahoma was like going from the major leagues to the minor leagues. Uh-huh. And that if I if I tried really hard and I practiced to the best of my ability, I might be able to go back to the major leagues. And I was like, dude, seriously, um, I only know sports because my dad was into sports, but do I look like I know baseball metaphors? Um, but he then very quickly ended up uh, leaving to go on some ministry trip overseas. So I didn't really have that much, uh, you know, a time with him. But my husband actually knew him uh, because they worked together at uh, the Dallas Training Center, I believe, at some point. Or there were a few other places they ended up running into each other. But um, yeah, so he's aware of who I am. <laughs> Um, and my husband. And then we have Gil Bates. They have a board of directors. Um, Tim Levandusky leads this. And then Gil Bates, who you guys might know from United Bates. Is it United oh. Bates of America? Or it's it's another TLC show. Yeah, I um, follow. Oh, okay. but yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. he also has 19 children. Mm. Um, and then we have David York. And we have John Bechtel. And I think John Bechtel is probably the one that's been with IBLP the longest. And then also Tim Levandusky. So they they were pre, pre-Bill pre Gothard being kicked out and everything. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important to know their names. You know, I think it's important yeah. to understand who is out there and who is continuing and perpetuating these these teachings. So there are no Duggars um, Like I board. said, they're not going away. Yeah. Yeah, so are the Duggars like, you know, like, 
Uh, yeah. Chill just asked. Are the Duggars on the board? There's there's no. no okay. No. There was discussion about it from what yeah. I understand. There was discussion about him maybe potentially coming on board um with IBLP, but I think uh I think very quickly when things started to happen with Josh, I think that that potential okay. started to fizzle pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah. This leads me to, I don't know if we're prepared to discuss this, but I saw a John Oliver report on homeschooling and it made mm. me really curious your thoughts on it and also if it rang true for you. And yeah, so I think, and I asked my amazing contributors here um, to watch it as well. So we're all very much up on it. And it was, I have to say, a great report on it. What, what did you think? What did you think? I, first of all, was, was just stunned and elated at the same time that he was discussing homeschooling. I was like, oh, this is amazing. Um, it reminded me of when Samantha B did a little clip on IBLP and the Duggars one time. <sighs> and I was like, whoa, you know, you're getting somewhere when it starts hitting that type of mm. mainstream, you know, uh, views and getting their eyes on things. So, but with John Oliver, I mean, the fact that it, it was one of, it was set up as one of his bigger segments too. I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this is going to be so juicy. I cannot wait. And it's so true. So much of what they talked about, um, you know, they had that father who was like, oh yeah, no, I can't let my kids go to public schools because you, they might learn about anal sex. I was like, what? what? Like they were talking about like the second grade. Or yeah. Like six, her seven, response is like, oh, is that your his... experience? And he's like, no, <laughs> I just heard. Yeah, well, no, but I learned it from, you know, some of the other kids. OK, so kids will be kids, dude. But you are so ignorant. I mean, your ignorant is on full neon light display right now. And you're going to take your kids and teach them. You're afraid of these anal sex conversations on the playground. Therefore, you now are so brilliant and intelligent and educated to educate your own child. How are you even going to pick a curriculum? How do you, does anybody really know how to do this? Because I don't think that guy does. And I'm very scared for his children. Um, just on a simple level of them becoming very uneducated in their life and then not having a hell of a chance when they get out into the real world because mommy and daddy were too scared. Well, even That's not OK to do to your kids. I am not and I'm not anti homeschool either. No, so do not mistake me. I believe that there are very appropriate places for homeschooling to take place. Absolutely. I think that if a parent does their due diligence and there are valid reasons for it, teach your kids at home. But what I wish could happen in America, especially, is that there was oversight of some kind, a welfare check for every single family, even for the good ones. If I, every family should get a welfare check twice a year, mm. minimum twice a year. Do yeah. knock on the door and talk to the children. Yeah, absolutely. We need to make sure that these kids are not being silently abused and, and shut up in their homes. How many times have we now seen where these religious Christian fanatics teach their kids at home and the next thing you know, they're chained to beds, they're starving and, you know, but praise Jesus and their attitudes are bad. So we had to keep on doing this to them. Where's the education? Where's the textbooks? I thought this was all about homeschooling. Yeah. It's about home abuse. So I'm so glad that John Oliver touched on a lot of this um, and spoke about it. They're also... <laughs> proof in the pudding on some of these homeschoolers where the the one young lady was like yeah so for the first hour it was bible <laughs> and then for the second like for an hour maybe there was a little bit of math and science and then the rest of the day was chores yeah mm -hmm. yeah that was her curriculum and yeah that's very prominent especially in big families I mean, your chores never end. So mom and dad have a homeschooling child on paper and in reality they have a maid Yes. Yes. And if you are in um, a lot of the conservative states, and I believe his he, he showed a chart about this, but in a lot of the conservative states, there is zero oversight. Well, your that's what they were have talking to take about. The SATs. Yeah. Um, they don't care how, how you teach your kids or what happens to them. They're just, you know, good on you. 
Um, and a lot of homeschool families, especially fundamentalists, ATI families in IBLP, they would move to these states mm. so that they could avoid all of the oversight. Wasn't that the Duggars? Didn't they move again? I think that was in the documentary. Didn't they move to a different state in order to... I thought that's what they did. They're but maybe in Arkansas. Not. I'm not exact. I don't profess to know yeah, anything about their I have no life. idea. <laughs> but um, but yeah, they they are in Arkansas, which is very friendly to homeschoolers. I just I thought it was a really fair documentary because you're right. It's not a, against. They showed a family that did were doing a brilliant job during COVID. Yeah. You know, teaching all their there was a lot of children, and they were doing a really great job. And so this isn't against that, but it's for those times that these homes are being used to indoctrinate children and to you take them away from getting them an education. And I thought that was interesting. One person said something like educational abuse. And I yes. was like, oh, like that is what's happening here. It, 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 it's educational abuse to teach them some, you know, like the family that are Nazis. That's abusive. But there's also the educational abuse of not giving an education. That's yeah, the, abuse. The neglect. The neglect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's, a, it's a parental neglect giving educational abuse or just or just, again, neglecting to educate your children. But a lot of a lot of Christians are like, but education isn't that big of a deal to me. God is a big deal to me. That's great for the parent. Good for you. You're old enough to make that decision for yourself. But you know what you had that your kids didn't an education so that you could choose for yourself what you wanted to believe. But when you decide, like my parents did, you don't need a, a traditional education. You just need God. Let me indoctrinate you to be a soldier for Christ. When I got married and went out into the real world, then what? And they they weren't they weren't around for the then what? They were doing their own thing and also believing their own narrative that they did right by me. And so every success is simply because I was taught character by Bill Gothard's system mm. or because I'm I'm a humble person and I'm not I don't brag and I'm not arrogant. And I have all these character qualities that were instilled in us. Character qualities was like a really, really big push within uh, Bill's education system. And so that that. That struggle of trying to explain to, to my parents and many other XATI parents, um, you didn't actually help me. You really stopped me from being able to be a successful person. Now I have to take the next six to eight years trying to figure out how to get there. Mm. I had to take a high school equivalency test to even enroll in cosmetology school. And I was 28 years old. Like I barely passed a high school equivalency test. Um, and I was petrified. I don't learn well at all. I have a really hard time reading a textbook and remembering information because I never learned how ever. So even if someone asks me, um, I don't know, a question where I don't know the answer, I really get freaked out inside because I don't know. And then I start to, to spiral because I'm like, well, I don't know, because this is how I was raised. And oh my mm -hmm. gosh. And then again, I'm reminded of how little access I had to anything. Um, but do my parents go through that on a daily basis? No, they were educated. They both went to school. My dad went to university. Like they have the education so they cannot sit in my shoes and they don't try to sit in the position that they put me in. And that's what flames me up so much. And so like this segment that John Oliver did, I, I just wish that more people, especially conservatives, I know that he's more of a liberal guy on, you know, on yeah. TV, but r I wish that conservatives would listen to that segment because it's really important that there is a very fine line when you bring your kids home and you choose to teach them what materials and he listed off i love that he listed off ace abeka bob jones and how wrong the materials are they the information in these biblical christian based textbooks are inaccurate and yet here's this guy so afraid that his kids are going to learn about something that isn't even taught in school yeah well that's and the it's, thing it's it's just about like fear mongering, like we talked before Absolutely. in our last one about fear and love. And what gets me is I think of those people in that thing where it's like listing all the chores that that young person had to do. And I think 
there's no choice for this person. Like there was no choice for you. Your parents are making the decision that your job will be wife and mother, caretaker of the home. They're not choosing like an educate, like give the person a choice. Maybe they do. Maybe they'll be, maybe they'll cure cancer. Maybe they'll like they could run the world. Maybe they can. You never know. And now not or maybe they'll be a great farmer. Who knows? Right. But there's a choice to find and pursue what you love. And I just think it, it saddens me that there's these structures in place for all these people and children who don't get an opportunity to choose for themselves or even even just introduce to things. And they might go, I hate languages. OK, great. You hate French. Fine. But at least, you know, a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. So it just it makes me sad when I think about it. And, you know, and even for you, it's just like this opportunity was taken from you and how like I have a friend who sometimes will talk about education and they had struggled with school and they said to me, they were admiring the fact that I reframed something that I didn't know. I'm like, well, I don't know that, but I'll learn it. Because mm. to them, that was like a fear, like you're saying. It's like, I can't say I don't know it because that just makes me look dumb. And it's like, well, yeah. no, you just don't know it. You haven't taken the time to learn it. So, so what? But I also come from a place that I had an education. You know, I was, I did ACE up until a certain point and then my mom went, Mm. okay, something else. But I value that and it makes me sad for you and it makes me sad for those people in that documentary, you know, in a sense of what could be. Yeah, in a sense of what could have been. Yeah, Yeah. because I can't can't get that time back. I can't get those child mind years back. I can't go back to my nine-year-old self who is just a big sponge waiting to learn and just only given, you know... (laughs) course of materials i i can't get that time back i can't i can't get that new fresh brain back you know now it's it's more of a conditioned response of because it happened far too often that i didn't know and i get really tired of like yep nope yep doesn't make yep of course i don't know yep nope i don't know either, that either and now i have friends that <laughs> they can just tell by how i respond that i actually don't know you know, because I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that's interesting. I think I, I watched that one time and they're like, but you probably didn't. Right. <laughs> and I was like, OK, now you don't have to call me out on it now. Just we know, <laughs> everybody knows Lindsay's life and story. Like, you also don't have to do that. Like, I also don't want to ma- be made to feel shitty about, yeah, no. you know, that I'm trying to I'm still in survival instinct sometimes. And that is a default to my survival is that I just want to try to assimilate with people because I don't want to be seen as less than. Um, now I, it's a lot better now. I'm not, this doesn't happen to me on a daily basis so much anymore because I am confident enough to say, you know what, <laughs> let me Google that really quick. Let me find out what, what the Google machine has to say. Thank goodness for Google in my generation. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I think it comes back to, too, as we were talking about in the previous episode, that, that fear is the basis for the parents doing what they're doing. They're making this decision out of fear and then they're keeping their child from everything which then also makes the child afraid well even so, the, even the example you gave before the guy who was homeschooling his kid because he didn't want him to learn about anal sex well yeah that's that's fear that's fear yeah yeah sure but but maybe you talk to your teacher in the second grade and say hey do any of your materials include anal sex <laughs> yeah and she'd probably look at you like you'd lost your mind like we totally. all did watching the tv going what <laughs> You know, and like you can't control the kids on the playground, dude. I mean, that and why is that? Why was sexuality your fear for your young child yes. at school? It just it bothers me that that's what that father was worried about. I don't really want that kid at home. It no. doesn't seem like there's the right processes of thought at home if all you're afraid of is that. If that's your fear to educate your child for t- what 12 years you know bring him bring him home uh, i don't know it it it, it just I, I don't it does not make sense to me and like i said there are wonderful wonderful parents that are homeschooling their children that bring in academics and help their kids thrive and learn when their when their child is being bullied when their child has learning disabilities yes. and they're not yes. getting the focus that they need i understand that i validate that i'm i'm sure at some point i probably would have really loved being homeschooled too you know, I, 
I had a very difficult time, even when I was in public school, retaining that information. But because I was in a really big group, no one was giving me individual, you know, care to try to learn in a different way. Um, so I see the validity of it, but I just, again, I, I've had this conversation on t- my TikTok lives so many times that even if you're the good guys in homeschooling, you too should be advocating for this oversight. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to a lot of conservatives, they don't want oversight because the government in their home. And that's the whole reason they're taking their kids away anyway, because the government's in the schools. Okay. Your fear is so irrational. Just your children are not going to have a chance. So I hope you have something for them. I hope that you are either prepared for them to live at home for the rest of their lives, which quite literally happens a lot with homeschool families. The girls get married off. A lot of the boys end up staying home until they find something to do. Um, And even with Bill Gothard, it was about us getting apprenticeships. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I was talking to someone recently where I was like, so, okay, you live in Texas. Cool. You got seven kids. Awesome. Uh, You're homeschooling. Uh, what materials are you using? And they said, and I was like, eh, not really well-rounded. What do you, th- what do your kids want to do in their futures? Because in school is where you start figuring out what you want to do with your life. Um, and that's not a bad, bad question to ask your children. Well, you know, they're going to marry da, 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 da. I'm like, no, no, don't default to marriage. No, don't default to that. Things could happen. What if, what if your child gets married and then their spouse passes away? They come back and live with you with their other kids that they just had. Or are you going to say, well, you got to make it work, kiddo? What are, what are you, you are not thinking long term in your decisions. You are thinking immediate fear. And again, it does not, it's not healthy for your child. And I am afraid for the kids. Well, it's abs. I mean, it is, it's fear, but I also, I also think ego is playing a huge part in this. Because I think that I think the ego is just out of control with a lot of the a lot of the parents that would that in the John Oliver thing. Anyways, my child's not going to have that belief. My child's not going to learn that my child's not going to like I found it stunning how they like there are kids that we don't like all these sort of nice. A lot of them were sort of fundamentalist religious based. And it was fascinating to me. That whether it's ignorance, like they don't imagine that there's things like child trafficking, uh, child labor, uh, these things happen. These things are rampant. These things are worldwide. So people produce children. They use children. They hurt children for sex trafficking, for for labor, for all kinds of purposes. And we have this kind of religious right movement protecting the people hurting the the least of us, the, 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 most the most vulnerable vulnerable of our humanity is children. And you have these people claiming that they, well, we're not going to, we're not going to have a law to protect the one, but it, which is fascinating because the scripture that they talk about, yeah. it actually says in that scripture, wouldn't, don't you leave the group yeah. to, to, to rescue, rescue the one. Yeah. And here they are saying like, well, no, our kids, what they're really saying is our kids are okay. We don't care about sex trafficked children. We don't care that we are fighting for a law that is propagating and a giving power and control to sex traffickers to child labor or to the parents like chained up their kids like the ones the whole family abusers. Yeah, I, like like these people so want their right and their freedom of choice so that they can make sure their children have no freedom of choice. And it is like yes. a, it is. You are uh, so right in that. <laughs> that makes absolutely perfect sense and no sense at all. Abs- yep. Yeah, exactly. And it's, and it's physical abuse, too. Oh, I like yeah. it, it's not just emotional abuse, because I think of those children that were chained to the beds and stuff mm-hmm. developmentally their brain has not developed certain pathways right. you know it's it's also physically so there is a physical now that's not all these people i'm not saying everybody now there's but it could be it, but that's why we need what you're saying is an oversight there needs, there to, needs to be an, to be yeah someone needs to check up that's what keeps you accountable yeah. that's what keeps you the ownership or the responsibility 
of you as the parent making this choice, it keeps you accountable to somebody that someone's going to be watching. Same with when you drive down the road and you're not supposed to speed. You might you might try to get to 85 every now and then. And then you're like, "Ah, maybe I should slow down because the the odds are there's going to be a cop at some point. Somebody calls me into course correcting. So even if you don't think you're doing something wrong necessarily they may come in test your kids and be like you know what you guys you need to really push your your sciences because they're they're really lacking in this and it's just to help your kid but they get so defensive about no 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 like you said i want my right to take away my own child's rights (laughs) it's it's crazy they wouldn't want that done to them well, that's what I. That's where the ego comes in. It's like when yeah. it, w- whether you're watching the Duggards or the the what's the there's the Bates, a, the Bates or, or or any of these the Plath or Plaths. Oh, the Plaths. Plath. Like like mm-hmm. it, whoever you're yeah. watching, they have this real sense of like I want the freedom to raise my family the way I want to raise my family. They're not saying I'm going to be obedient to my parents and raise my children exactly the way that my parents raised me. What they're saying is like, screw everybody. I'm raising my kids the way I think that they should be raised. I want my kids to do exactly what I want them to do. I don't want them to go outside of my teaching in any way, shape or form. And kids have no voice. And they become yes. predators because like it's of okay that. for them to yeah. have their own value system, but that's not something they allow their own children. But the value system is all they care about. Too, we have to remember that they don't care about education mm-hmm. because they, they don't value that either. They only value what is t- what is taught as far as your role, your like your what do they call it? Your um your sexual role. Like you are female, you are male, so mm. you will get married. You will you know you don't need to know all the things. My dad at one point actually told me that because I like I was struggling so much in math around like the fifth or sixth grade. And we were like into fractions and all of this. And he was like, you know what? You don't really need to. He was so frustrated with me. And he was just like, you know, you don't really need to know much more than this. Like you've got some the basic fractions and stuff down. You know enough to cook and sew that. So let's just stop doing this. I mean, I it 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 pricked me so heavily in my soul because I I wanted to understand, but clearly you're not teaching me well because you don't know how to teach different types of different learning types. Mm-hmm. So that's your problem as my awesome teacher person who decided you wanted to do this, but you're not capable. You don't have all the resources to teach me, teach me appropriately. And then because you're frustrated, I'm not learning the way you learn and the or I'm not learning from the way you teach. Now it's like, oh, well, you know what? It's okay. Let's just default to your gender role. You're going to be a wife that cooks and sews. So, you know, like, don't even worry about going any further. Yeah, I've made rude. the cho- I have made the so choice rude. for you. I will tell you what you're going to do. I will tell you who you're going to be. I mean, is that not some kind of form of sexual slavery of some sort? Mm-hmm. Well, because you're not allowed slavery. Well, like you're not allowed out. You've got like in order to stay in the fold, you have to play your role. You have to do the thing. And if you don't, there's a huge cost. Control. You, you know, you lose uh-huh. your family. Control, yeah. but also like. You lose your family. That's the thing. There is a part of disconnection, your right? Your community. You lose your community. You lose all that. You're exiled out because you're different. You're other. You have gone to the world, uh, the other side, whatever. There's always that us and them. You know, there's mm-hmm. always that us and them. And when I was growing up, it was like the Egyptian schools. I don't know why they picked on Egypt. Yeah, that is funny, actually. It's so weird. <laughs> I know. I still don't weird. know. And there's nothing against Egyptians. Like, I don't know why. No, I get it. Because it's the Israelites and the Egyptians. I guess yeah. so. But they're just so educated. <laughs> Holy terror, they know stuff. It's like a history lesson. In, in but but we were arrogant enough to, because they used to say, oh, your education is far more superior. This was ACE, pro, like mm-hmm. ACE mm-hmm. that was shown on this documentary. Uh, your education is so much better than the Egyptian schools. And then I see these visuals that come up for ACE, and it's a dinosaur with men chopping leaves. And I'm like... I wonder if they've changed the materials. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. I doubt it. I just doubt it. Why change it? Because the Bible hasn't changed in how many eons. Why right. should their education change? Because their their goals and their roles have not changed. They don't care. And isn't this what happens when we have predators set, set up a system and then they are going to, by nature, defend their system? Because their system props them up. Their system supports them. 
The system is not to protect the children. The system is not to propagate or to support or to allow the children to thrive and have a voice and and follow their hearts and be led. The system is designed to create ego boost for the people in power and control, which in this case is the parental units, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So it's it's a predatory system that nothing, I, I wonder how many times in history we have to learn the same damn le- lesson, which is like predatory systems collapse eventually. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't collapse in a small way. They collapse in a really big, ugly way. Well, you hope they collapse, though. Well, eventually, so far, so far. I was going to say the sad part is, though, we have to wait for that collapse. And yeah. while we're waiting for these collapses of Bob Jones University, ACE, Becca, thankfully continuing to kind of crumble as IBLP. But while we're waiting, thousands of kids are being damaged and harmed and abused because of this. Mm-hmm. And there's there's no way for them to get help. You know, I, I think about, you know, teachers are mandatory reporters. Right. So if if they notice a kid with a bruise, they have to tell somebody about it. And they're, that's, that's the watchful eye of someone who gives a shit about these kids. So if you're in the home and you believe in spanking your kids, I had nowhere to go. I had no one to show my bruises. So then who, how do you even have a voice? Because you're now also conditioned through that physical fear. And your mind blocked from being able to learn. I mean, I really felt like so, so trapped more so beyond than just like being in my home. Mm. You know, there was just no concept of how I could get help at, at anywhere. Well, and that's what's so beautiful about, I think, the work that you're doing, Lindsay, and advocating for the children, for the families, for the for the people stuck in these types of situations, the work that we at Prey vs. Predator are doing, just trying to give voice, trying to give somebody a place where they can go for safety, for connection, for words, for language, to understand that maybe what they see isn't isn't all there is. Yes. And maybe there, there is, is this a whole lot more out there. Beautiful and world. And it's really going to be scary. It was scary for me when I first started to step out into the world in my 20s. But there, there is life out there. And yeah. there are people that are going to be very compassionate. Now, yes, you'll find people who are also assholes. But, <laughs> but there are people that are very compassionate and understanding when you are brave enough to explain to them what happened to you. Um, and I have been caught by wonderful, wonderful people who never make me feel bad about not knowing something, or um, I'm curious about asking a question that feels like a really dumb question, something that I should know. But I keep telling myself, you know what, at least I'm still curious. At totally. least I haven't decided to stop being curious or stop wanting to learn. And I like how you rephrase, rephrase saying, you know what, I don't know, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to learn that. I'm going to figure that out. I like that a lot better than just feeling like really, really bad and insecure about, yeah, like, oh no, I don't know, uh, you know, and just kind of feel shameful about it and then spin out um, and like kind of being triggered by someone asking me something I don't know. Yeah. And I learned that because I deal with kids, right? I deal with teenagers and, and, uh, you learn that pretty quickly because you don't know everything. And I'm okay with that, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, I, and and th- I would say to these parents, be okay with not knowing everything. You know, they obviously think they know what their kids need and maybe they don't. But uh, we really appreciate you talking and speaking out. And this is, we're Thank trying to create you, a Lindsay. platform for this because we are prey and we are powerful. And I want to say how powerful you are. You know, you. You, are, Amen. you are very powerful with your voice, but also with your wisdom. Yeah. And so I want you to hear that and acknowledge that and take that in because we really appreciate you speaking with I us. I will absorb so. it. Thank you very <laughs> much. Absorb it, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thank much you for so being much. with us again. Thank All the you. best to you. Well, uh, where can we, where can our listeners find you? Uh, you have this big, beautiful life uh, that you have stepped out of the umbrella and allowed the rain to rain upon you, and yes. you have uh, found yourself in a very interesting world for for somebody. Um, under the umbrella formally. <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit about the big, beautiful world that you have bravely found yourself in. Mm. I basically went out of the fryer or out of the frying pan and into the fryer with, <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. with my world. I went from, you know, the 
uh, overbearing authoritarian, you know, fundamentalist life and into fashion and beauty. <laughs> so um, both are pretty much a nightmare, <laughs> but I love the world I'm in now because it's my choice to be there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I, I work as a makeup artist and a hairstylist. Um, I've been doing this for over 15 years at this point. And um, people can find my work at crazypretty.com. Uh, I work as a makeup artist mainly, but also do hair, but usually for photo shoots for, magazines, editorials, advertisements, beauty campaigns, uh, sometimes fashion week. I go over to fashion week, uh, in Milan, sometimes in New York. I used to do Paris and just have a really good time. I've, I've done a few movies and commercials as well. So that's what I do in my real life. Uh, And the rain can keep pouring because it refreshes my soul and it's actually not full of big hail balls or evil lightnings (laughs) or anything like that. You know, rain can be very cleansing. So thank you rain. And, um, I'm happy to have my own autonomy, my own mind and my own voice. And I have learned that the more I lean into it, the truer I am to myself and, the I'm surprised at how uh, I have a North star. I have, I have my integrity. I have my uh, morals and my values, but they're not tied to religion. And I love that for myself because I'm not going to more than likely be primed to harm and, and be predatory to others, mainly because I had so many predators in my own life that as prey, I have a lot of compassion and sensitivity to not do that to other people. Yeah, that's beautiful. Amen to that. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, (laughs) Lindsay. Thank you. (laughs) Bye.